Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome little Ryzen 7000 series powered mini PC from Minus Forum. Now this is actually a special edition and originally it was only going to go on sale in Japan, but since the release they've actually brought it over to the US. This is the Sakura, or otherwise known as uh, Cherry Blossom over here in the States, Special Edition UM773. And as soon as I saw this, I knew I had to get my hands on it. We're actually working with a really powerful little Ryzen 7000 series APU. We've got RDNA 2 graphics, 8 cores, 16 threads, and a boost clock up to 4.75 gigahertz. And I can guarantee you, it's going to be the most powerful pink mini PC that you've seen today. I personally think it looks absolutely amazing, and originally I thought this was just kind of a little vinyl on the top, but the whole unit itself is pink, and it seems like this was painted on. It's got texture to it, and it could be a textured vinyl, but either way, I think this thing looks absolutely amazing. And inside of the box, we're also going to get a color matching stand. So we've got that pink stand, and you can set this up in a vertical orientation or horizontal. It's really up to you. We've also got some replacement non-slip feet, also matching the color. It will support a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom of the unit, so we have our adapter, a vase mount, and our 120 watt power supply. They also include an HDMI cable in case you don't have an extra laying around. And when it comes to I.O., up front here we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and two USB type C ports. We've got one USB 4, which does use 40 gig protocol, it will support an eGPU, and the other type C port up front here only supports data. But moving around back, we've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two full-size HDMI ports, and two USB 2.0 ports. Taking a quick look inside, we can easily upgrade the RAM and the NVMe SSD. This uses SODIMM DDR5, and with this one, I've got 16 gigabytes running at 4800 MHz in dual channel, and a PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD. And one thing I noticed here is we've got an upgraded M.2 cooler, not exactly sure if every single one of the UM773s is going to have this, but it's nice to see a little change up. So like I mentioned, this is powered by a Ryzen 7000 series APU. So we've got the Ryzen 7 770 35HS. It's based on Zen 3 Plus. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.2 gigahertz, and a boost up to 4.75. Graphics are handled by a Radeon 680M iGPU. This is based on RDNA 2. It's got 12 compute units and a clock up to 2200 megahertz. This unit supports up to 64 gigabytes of SODIMM DDR5 running at 4800 MHz. It supports one PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD, plus we've got room in the bottom for a 2.5 inch drive. We've also got Wi-Fi 6 here, along with that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port around back, and I'm going to be running Windows 11. Now when it comes down to it, they're offering a few different variants. You can pick this up bare bones, or you can opt to already have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 pre-installed and a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD. So I've been up and running for a little while now. I've got all of the drivers updated. Uh, everything's really smooth here, very snappy. I'm using the built-in Wi-Fi 6 right now to browse the web. And you know, to tell you the truth, if I just needed a PC for document editing, email checking, web browsing, 4K video playback, some photo editing, or light video editing, then I could get by with a machine like this. The Ryzen 7000 series chip that they're using in here has more than enough power for a lot of people out there that need a PC. And we're working with a very small form factor. Give you a quick look at some 4K video playback from YouTube. We've got a 4K 60 HDR video. So overall, this thing is putting out enough power for 4K video playback, whether you want to stream from YouTube, Netflix, or even internal or external drives. Very impressed by the Ryzen 6000 and 7000 series APUs. I mean, we don't need a big GPU here, so obviously we don't need a huge PC to have, you know, an everyday desktop PC. But there's other things that we can do with this, like gaming. We've got the Radeon 680M iGPU with RDNA 2 graphics. Obviously, it's not going to be on par with something like a dedicated NVIDIA GPU, but playing some AAA games is totally possible. Here we have Dirt 5 900p, we're at low settings. Remember, we've got internal graphics. I personally still think it looks great, and we're getting an average of around 83 FPS out of this game. If you've ever tried to run this on lower-end iGPUs, you know how hard this one can be, even at lower resolutions, lower settings. But with these RDNA 2 based internal graphics, it kind of does it with ease. This is looking really great here. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks I ran. And the first one here is Geekbench 6 coming in with a single core of 2019 Multi 9865. 
So uh, these Geekbench 6 scores do look higher than Geekbench 5. It's really hard to compare the two, but this is what I'm going to start using from now on. Not bad from what I've tested so far. I also ran a few GPU benchmarks using 3 Mark. We've got Night Raid with a 25,907. With Fire Strike, we got a 6,363. And finally, Time Spy with the 2,658. Now, unfortunately, with the newer UM773s, we cannot overclock the RAM. So I've got some 5,600 megahertz RAM that I usually overclock to 6,000 with these mini PCs and get really great performance out of these iGPUs, but the BIOS on this is locked when it comes to overclocking the RAM. The only thing I can really do is create a modified BIOS, and I am working on it. Now, uh, with 6,000 megahertz RAM, we could really up the GPU performance on this, and as soon as I can get everything set up, I will make another video. But uh, with that said, let's go ahead and test out a few more PC games. Here's GTA 5 1080p normal settings. We're getting an average of 91 FPS out of this game. So uh, yeah, these graphics have definitely come a long way, and I know this is an older one, but it's still really fun to play, and I kind of wanted to start off light here, and then we're going to move over to some newer AAA games. But as you can see, you know, when it comes to these older AAA games, they're not going to be an issue when it comes to these integrated graphics. Next on the list, we've got Skyrim Special Edition 1080p High Settings. So for the most part, we're at a pretty steady 60, but every once in a while I do notice it drop down. It's few and far in between, but I have seen it drop down to around 57 FPS. Now I'd probably never notice it if I didn't have that frame counter on, and we could definitely alleviate this by taking a couple of the settings down to medium. Injustice 2 is another one I like to throw in to have a fighting game in the mix. 1080p medium settings, these APUs can handle this game really well, even 5000 series at 900p medium did pretty well. Spider-Man Miles Morales 720p low settings. So at 720p as you can see I mean it's really playable, we actually get an average of 78 FPS, but with this 4800MHz RAM, it does kind of fall on its face once we go to 900p. So we get around 64 FPS there, but it does dip under 60. At 720, we're good to go. Cyberpunk 2077 720p low settings, we get an average of 65 FPS. God of War 720p original settings, this has really been a hit or miss the past few times I've tested it and it comes down to the new AMD driver updates and game optimizations. And the final game I wanted to test here was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I'm using the built-in benchmark and I'm using the basic preset. So uh, first up we have no resolution scale, we're at 900p basic settings. Average 70 FPS, we got a low of 44. Now with some resolution scaling, we can definitely up this because once it's set to 65%, average 110 FPS and a low of 87. So we're getting some great performance here with that resolution scale. And I didn't go through and test with FSR. I figured I could definitely go ahead and play it just like it is. And the final thing I like testing with these is just total system power consumption. Got this plugged into a kilowatt meter, and at idle, pulls 12 watts, average gaming, 71, and the max that I can get this to jump up to while maxing out the CPU and GPU at the same time is 91 watts, which does sound like a lot, but the new cooling system that Minus Forum has been using on their UM models for a little while now is definitely the best one that I've seen for a mini PC. Now when it comes to like the 6900HX and even the 7000 series, they also utilize liquid metal. It's a single fan setup with two heat outlets, so we've got two fin arrays here to keep everything nice and chilly. So overall, given the form factor, definitely a great performer. I'm a huge fan of these Ryzen 7000 series chips, but I do wish we had the ability to overclock the RAM just out of the box. I know they don't recommend it. It's set up for 4800MHz RAM, but it would be nice to have the option just in case somebody like me or a lot of people watching this wanted to get a bit more performance out of this PC. If you're interested in learning more about this mini PC, I'll leave some links in the description. And keep in mind, you don't have to pick up the uh, Cherry Blossom version. They do have the regular black version, which also looks great, but it's just nice to have a little bit of a color change on these mini PCs. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in seeing Linux running on this, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.